While I like to use Lightroom for managing my photo library, I don't think it delivers the best image quality from my RAW files. For that, I like to use the Exo Photo Lab. In this video, I'll explain my workflow for using the two together, and I'll share some of my favourite Photo Lab 7 adjustments. Here's the image that I want to process, which I shot handheld at night inside a train station. The shutter speed was a fifth of a second, and the ISO was up at 1600, so it's full of noise. If I magnify the preview to 200% in Lightroom, you can see the problem. Also, even though the preview has the lens correction applied, I can still see some barrel distortion. And there's the problem of converging verticals, because I was tilting the camera down when I shot this. I'll be correcting these and a few other problems in Photolab 7. And to do that, I need to send the RAW file from Lightroom to Photolab. But don't make the mistake of right-clicking on the image in the library module and choosing Photolab from the Edit menu. That's going to cause Lightroom to process the RAW file and pass the result to Photolab. This will prevent Photolab from extracting the best image quality from the RAW file. Instead, what we need to do is use the Lightroom File menu where you'll find the Plugin Extras submenu. This is where you should see the Photolab 7 option to transfer the RAW file. A common question about the Photolab plugin is, how do I install it? But that's something you don't need to worry about, because Photolab automatically installs it when it detects Lightroom. If you open the Lightroom Plugin Manager from the Lightroom File menu, you should see two Photolab plugins running. If they aren't running, select them and turn them on. One plugin handles the exporting of the RAW file from Lightroom to Photolab, and the other imports the file processed by Photolab back into the Lightroom catalogue. Let's go back though to the plugin extras and select the option to transfer the RAW file to Photolab so you can see how it works. When I do that, Photolab opens and loads the RAW file for processing. If you look at the project section of my Photolab side panel, you can see the plugin has created a new project folder, which contains the RAW file. That's why we only see one image in the Photolab display. Let's click the Customize tab now to apply the adjustments to the image. First off, I want to correct the lens distortion, which is pretty severe in this image. The Photolab editing tools are arranged into a series of panels and tabs on the right of the interface. If I click the Workspaces menu, you can see that this is the DxO standard workspace which controls which panels appear. If I now open the Geometry tools, you can see there's an option for Distortion, which is currently turned off. When I click the Switch icon at the top left of the panel, it's activated and the lens correction is applied. You can then see in the drop-down that this is based on the DxO module for my lens, which produces an excellent correction. Watch the side walls and the glass panels at the bottom as I turn it off and on. The other thing that I want to do with this image is remove the converging verticals effect. At this point, I want to highlight that I have DxO Viewpoint also installed on my computer. This integrates seamlessly into Photolab, so if you don't have it installed, you may not have the same tools as me, or they may look different. I'll turn on the Perspective Correction panel, and then click the Auto option to correct the distortion. As there are a lot of horizontal and vertical lines in this image, the software can analyse them and apply a convincing correction. This also stretches the image, so we end up with these black areas around the edge, where there isn't any detail. To remove them, I'll use the Crop panel. In the Correction drop-down, I have the Auto option set. This creates a crop of the image to remove the black areas and maximise the image part automatically. I can also change the aspect ratio of the crop if I want to. Although the original aspect ratio of 4 thirds looks good, I think I prefer the Unconstrained option to maximise the image area. Now that I've corrected the image distortion, let's look at the noise reduction and detail. You'll find these in the Details section. This is where I'll choose the Denoise technology to use. Because this image is full of fine details, I'm going to choose Deep Prime XD. Notice this doesn't produce much of a change to the image preview when I select it. This is because only standard noise reduction is applied to the preview. 
Instead, we need to use this magnifier tool to select the area we want to inspect. DxO do this because Deep Prime doesn't just apply noise reduction. It also handles the critical demosaicing step for the RAW file. That takes an awful lot of processing effort, which is why we only see a preview of a small section of the image. I'll leave the settings for this option at the default, as they produce a good result with my Olympus RAW files. The other correction I like to apply in the detail panel is to turn off the lens softness correction. But I won't use the default for that because I find it's too strong with this lens and camera. A global setting of 40% along with a detail setting of 30 is usually enough to produce excellent sharpness with these files. If I show you the image at 200% magnification and turn the lens softness correction off and on, you can see the difference it's making. Now for the colour settings. My working colour space is set to DXOY Gamut, which is like Profoto RGB, but the theoretical colours that you get in Profoto have been removed. Now because I don't have the colour rendering panel turned on, the colours we see in the preview are produced using the DXO generic neutral rendering. As I'll be exporting a DNG file back to Lightroom, there isn't really any point in playing around with these settings. The DNG file is profile independent, so I can set the profile in Lightroom once the file is imported there. The only way to set a colour rendering used in Photolab is to export the process file in an image format like TIFF or JPEG. My final adjustments to this image are in the Light tab where I'll turn on the Smart Lighting. This helps to balance the lighting across the image frame. And because I can see some glare caused by the bright lights, I'll turn on the Clearview Plus adjustment. That usually only needs a slight adjustment of between 10 and 20. You can see the difference that these changes have made if I click the Compare button. I'm now ready to export the edited image back to Lightroom as a DNG file. To do this, I'll select the Image menu and then the Export sub-menu. That's where I can choose the Lightroom option. I then see the Export to Lightroom dialog where I can select the action to perform from a drop down list. I'm going to select Export the image as a DNG file with all the corrections applied. When the processing is complete, the DNG file opens in Lightroom. You can see that it's been added as a new collection in the Photo Lab collection set. If I switch to the Develop module and zoom to 200%, you can see the image is full of detail and noise free. Now earlier in the video, I mentioned that I was using the DXO Wide Gamut Color Space, but I didn't set a color profile. If you want to know more about how to manage the colors and achieve better colors in Photolab, watch this video next. Thanks for watching today and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon for another video.